Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spectrum's Worst Games. Although, as you can probably tell if you're used to this uh, particular package, um, this episode is going to be more like the uh, the Spectrum's Worst Compilations. Now, this game has been covered on YouTube before by various other um, famous YouTubers, such as Guru Larry, I think Ashens has done a video on it as well. Um, but there's there's plenty of them out there. Um, but I thought I'd give this one a go. Now, this one is actually one that I have had previous experience with. I do somewhere still own a copy of this game, uh, compilation even. Uh, this was released by Firebird Software back in 1985. And no, that isn't a misprint in the bottom left. They really did print their logo upside down on the cover of this game. Um, on the cover of this uh, cassette inlay even. Um, it contains five games and as you can see according to the cover they are five of the worst games ever. Um, now the reviewers um, I've got three reviews for this one. One done by Sinclair User Magazine uh, Warning this cassette contains five of the most uninspired games ever to disgrace the spectrum and they've given it two out of five Sinclair Programs um, said, how do you review a game which explicitly tells you don't buy this? Not only that, it tells you that these are meant to be five of the worst games ever. Um, they've called it price too much, rating 9%, uh, which is, I think, probably the lowest score I've come across yet on a game. Although saying that, I haven't done Count Duckula 2 yet, so stay tuned. Um, and Crash Magazine, they were a little bit more forgiving, though. They gave it 39.9999999% recurring. Um, what was their final comment to this? Uh, let's have a look. Right, okay. Um, I should have got this ready, actually. Uh, sorry about that. Right, using the old crash system of having the overall figure as a strict uh, average of the other marks, it looks much better that way. Um, they've basically got use of money 6%, but then they go up right up to value for money 700%. The thing that should be pointed out about this game was Firebird Software um, actively encouraged people to copy this tip. Um, Yes, they were quite happy for you to buy it, but um, th th they they had no problems uh, no problems at all if you wanted to get out there, uh, borrow a copy of this uh, from a mate, and then use your twin de uh, twin deck tapes to uh, to copy it. However, as you're about to find out, why would they actually want to do that with these games? Um, apologies, by the way, for the previous video that I released. The sound quality wasn't great. Uh, I have tried to change the sound quality on this one um, to improve it. So fingers crossed, we'll get uh, we'll get better sound for you. Now it does explicitly say on this that it's 48k spectrum. So we've got the emulator loaded up in 48k mode, and let's get going with the first game on there, which is Race Ace. Stop the tape. Now the one thing I found out about this when I was a kid, and I always found this quite amusing, was that this game was programmed in BASIC, um, and you could uh, quit out of it just by doing that. Anyway, not going to do that. Let's get back into it. I hope I haven't messed up the code now by just clicking on run. Now you'll also notice as well that it says speed 1 to 250. 1 is insanely slow. And 250, I don't think anyone would be able to cope with the game. So if I put it on speed 1 for you, one lap. Okay, it doesn't like one lap. Is it minimum? Okay, minimum of three laps. I'm not going to play all three laps because, as you're going to see, we'll be here probably for the next 10 years waiting for that to happen. But anyway, let's get going. This is speed one. Okay. Now, even though I said, uh, even though I've set it for three laps, okay. Um, one thing about this game is, is that once you get to the lead, uh, once you get into the lead, and cross the finish line, then you win. It doesn't really matter how far behind you are. Okay. 
as you can see this is taking forever just on speed number one right so let's quit out of it I'm gonna pick something a little bit more normal so three laps and it's still insanely slow I actually forgot how slow that was let's go up to a hundred with three laps okay that's a bit more like it it's still glacial in regards to what obviously appear to be spectrum takes on formula one cars grand prix simulator this ain't by the way um, now i used to be pretty good at this game yes i practiced it i practiced one of the worst racing games ever because i liked racing games right so i'm no longer in last place I'm just basically going to show you what happens when you do get into the leads. Because, as I said... Oh, that's right, you can actually get run off the track. I'd forgotten that. Um, oh, I should say, spun out by other competitors. Um, you know, be your own Valtteri Bottas. Right, uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm actually bored already. Um, right, let's quit out of it. I know you're all waiting to see what it looks like on three speeds. So here we go. This is um, this is full 250 speed. Completely unplayable. Right? How long is it before I get lapped? And I'm lapped. There we go. Ah. Uh, right. I. Yeah. Okay. The one good thing about that is, because it's basic, you can just quit out of it. So, let's load the second game on the tip, which, as you can see, is Fido. Um, left N, uh, sorry, left is N, right is M, sit or whack is Q. So, on my tip in the house, this didn't work for ages, and then suddenly decided that it was going to work, and burst into life so for the for the first couple of years of having this tip I only had three working games because the other Fido game didn't work neither anyway here we go Fido it's whack-a-mole basically you've got to bash these moles on the head to stop them eating your food now, do you see all those um, crosses at the top of the screen there he's actually eating my food so you can go away oh and there we go that's my time up there is nothing to this game at all you'd think that maybe it was because the ones closest to the dog's kennel um, would be the ones who are actually eating his food but no it doesn't matter where they pop up your food goes down and as soon as you take one out, another one immediately appears. Oh, you, sorry, I'd forgotten. You can go and eat the food. Okay, now, was it that you had to be able to... Um, like, oh, go away... Oh, I have no food left now, so when this food runs out, that's my lot. So sound quality is fantastic, as you can tell. You know, it's um, it's the old Spectrum beeper. Yeah, I'm already bored. I don't know about you, but this is boring me. So once I die now... Oh no, I'd actually completed it, that's right. Oh, okay, I'd forgotten about the birds. Ah, there's the collision detection working wonders because I tried to sit down. Although, strangely, when you sit down, you get taller. And the other thing as well is that, obviously, although this is a dog, when he sits down, he looks more like a monkey. I'm sorry, the back of that dog's head is more like a monkey's head. So, 
I'm a bit puzzled as to everything really about this game. Right, um, quit. It doesn't quit. All it does when you press the Q button from the previous game is he sits down and starts whacking moles again. Right, you're going to get a hint now as to what emulator I use because I can't just quit out of it and um, and reset the spectrum like that. So, game number three is Weasel Willy. Now I I don't remember much about this game. Ooh, redefine. Let's do that. QA and OP. Sounds a bit better on this one, actually. But it's a little bit annoying. Oh, was this snake? It... No, it wasn't a snake, because... What? Okay, so I managed to stay alive and win. Is it just to try and get as far as you can without hitting any of these green things? What happens if I hit a green thing? I die, presumably. Let's find out. Mm. You've blown it. This video is a little bit longer than normal, because I've noticed it's already up to 11 and a half minutes now. Oh, I'm already bored. Right, new. Okay, game number four is the sequel to the amazing Fido game called Fido 2 Puppy Power. This time we've got an up and a down button, but we've still got the same buttons as before, so let's dive in. Oh, that was good. I died straight away. Oh, and I died straight away again. You can see. <laughs> uh, oh, he's chasing after me. Go away! I can't get... Oh, come on! The problem is, is I'm also pressing the wrong button. You can't... Oh, right, okay. I've managed to get out of the way of whatever that purple thing is, and I really hope that's his nose. Right. Doink, doink. What? Fido can shoot lasers out of his nose. Uh, I'm... I... 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 I, I, I am absolutely speechless. I don't know what to say about that. And let me show you the last game on the tape. Now this one, I actually have good memories about because I used to play this with my grandmother. I think the sound is still too loud. I do apologise. I'll get that sorted again. But um, this one doesn't really have too much noise, uh, ongoing background music. So here we go. Yeah, I used to play this with my grandmother because she was really... She used to like the fruit machines. And I used to play this with her. And... We used to have a bit of fun with it. But as you can see, it's a very basic fruit machine. It's not like Codemaster's fruit machine simulator, which came along later, where you could have the chance of um, gambling taking that sort of, th you know, and taking it up and getting more money coming out. Um, and if I'm right, I think this is also in basic as well. Yes, it is. Are we going to win anything before I have to hit, uh, I have to hit stop? Oh, I can nudge. Right, what can I nudge? Let's see if I can get some bars. Ooh! Oh. Oh, I do have the option of gambling. Go on, then. Oh, God, that's right. Um. Yay. Yay. Boo. Okay, are we going to win anything on this particular roll? 
I'm going to guess no. Bell, lemon, horseshoe, bar. Alright, let's do one more spin. And then if this doesn't work, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Lemon, no. Pound, no. Bell. Okay, this is a long spin. Doesn't want me to stop, obviously. Right, bar, horseshoe, lemon, bar. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, I shall see you all again soon, uh, where we'll have another of the Spectrum's worst reviewed games uh, to see whether or not it's um, it, it's that decent. As for Don't Buy This, it costs £2.50. Um, they actively encouraged you to copy the game uh, and distribute it freely. Uh, it gave some exposure to people who sent in some games um, to Firebird that just weren't good enough to be published on their own. I think... I, th I bought it because I was intrigued by the title. I hadn't seen any reviews at the time. But... I actually did enjoy it um, for what it's worth and as as I said before I used to practice race ace and go back to it quite a lot um, so I, I obviously must have liked it to some extent anyway that's don't buy this firebird software 1985 uh, I've been Jeff and my Twitter is NCC17 Formula 1 uh, like and subscribe follow me on Twitter and uh, I hope to see you on the next video take care bye bye